What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy B Hot Radio Show. There, stepping in the building, I got a family member and friend to the show, a town legend, Bone Crusher. Yeah. What's good with it, boss? What's happening, B Hot? First of all, Bone, you done ran out of town on me. Yeah. I can't pull up on Bone Crusher when I need to pull up no. on him. I, no. What was it that made you say, you know what? I need to escape the A. Man, you know, um, during COVID, I uh, had a uh, an epiphany, if you will. I started mm. to um, figure out ways to see life better. I yeah. start, you know, I'm always trying to figure out how to make myself healthier. Yeah. Um, and a lot of stuff didn't work. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we, as you know, as we grow older, we lose a lot of things. You know, we don't bounce back as like we used to. Yeah. So what I did was a good friend of mine, Jazzy Faye, and ours mm-hmm. uh, introduced me to an herbalist, and he mm-hmm. um, asked me if I, I wanted to come and get myself together. And the first thing we did, uh, we did a 30-day detox where mm. I, I ate raw food for a whole 30 days during <laughs> COVID. Um, then I drank a lot of teas, like chaparral tea, yeah. sea malls. Yeah. The list goes on and on and on. And um, essentially, man, what happened was I ended up going down to Baton Rouge, man, and meeting up with a doctor. Um, Dr. Kelly, God rest his soul, man. And he um, he lost his life doing, you know, the coronavirus, man. Damn. Great dude. Great dude, man. Yeah. Um, he uh, he turned me on to a lot of stuff, man. Told me about what's going on with my body. I, I spent hours and hours in a hyperbaric chamber, uh, getting my, my my cells rejuvenated, mm-hmm. um, stretched out, and all that stuff, man. Then I went to down to Dallas, Texas, man, and started working out with a trainer. Yeah, um, it was an amazing time for me, man. For a whole year, all I did was just work out. Mm. Eat, sleep, and yeah. go to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> also, me this though, bone yeah. being out of that Atlanta state of mind and yeah. being able to just function again outside the city. Right? Did you feel any different once you once you put the city behind you and just went on out there on your journey, man? Um, health wise, yes. Yeah. I mean, I think Atlanta is a city of greatness personified. Mm. I, I love the city. I, I help bring a lot of stuff to the city. I help people in the city. Yeah. People have helped me in the city. So that model is what it's really all about. And I think that for me, um, it was a time for me to just do some things, change up, start uh, you know, investing in myself. I invest so much in the city, you know that. Yeah. Don't a lot of people don't know this, but I invest a lot into Atlanta. Exactly. And I've helped a lot of people, never ask for anything out of it, don't ask for no money back, don't yeah. ask for nothing. I just help people. Yeah, and um, I've uh, I learned that I need to help myself. Damn right, you know? <laughs> damn right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Bone. Now, from what I understand, you're working on a documentary right now as we yeah. speak as well. I mean, yeah. what the hell is going on, sir? Hey, so right now we we partnered up. My wife and I, um, a story and I, we partnered up with uh, Swirl Films and uh, mm. Peachtree TV to bring a uh, inclusive, all inclusive, mm. uh, exclusive. Um, 50 year anniversary of the Atlanta hip hop scene. That's crazy. Um, we're starting at Mojo, going all the way up to the right now to the day. Yeah. And we're starting our interviews on tomorrow, which will be the 29th of okay. of, of, uh, of June. Mm-hmm. And um, we will be um, interviewing um, everybody, man. It's gonna be crazy. Every, when I say everybody, everybody. Watch out for it. It's gonna be a 10 show docu-series. Damn. So uh, it's about 85 interviews we're going to be having and mm-hmm. it's going to be fun um, we're going to be talking about Atlanta we're going to be talking about the city yeah. talking about the people inside the city how it was invented how the structure began all the way back to to Dangerous Darren Fears the first guy to ever play yeah. hip hop in Atlanta right <laughs> so we're we're, we're, um, we're taking it there Okay, Bone, I need you to take me to when hip-hop first bit your ass in Atlanta. <laughs> I ain't talking about the New York music. I'm yeah, talking about yeah. in Atlanta. When did it hit you here? Um, Man, that would have to be when it hit me here? Yeah. Man, let me tell you something. For me, high school, when it hit me here, mm-hmm. in the beginning it was, you know, New York. but Of course. Atlanta, it was Edward J and the J team. Okay. Um. The J-Team tapes, man, you're talking about DJ Man, DJ Lynn, yeah. uh, DJ Smurf, who is now Mr. Collie Paul, Come Kizzy Rock, yeah. Monet, God rest his soul, God, yes, Monet sir. just passed. I just saw that. Man, man. Rest in peace, I got the Monet. news from um, Poncho the other day, man, it's real. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, uh, you know, Lady DJ and yeah. the King himself, Edward J., which actually brought me into 
where I really started to understand what hip hop was about from a BPM standpoint, mm. right? Because I used to try to be a DJ back in the day and I stayed about maybe three or four blocks from Smurf. Mm -hmm. And and I wasn't as good as Smurf, mm. you know what I mean? And, and it's just a situation where I would go over Smurf house, right? Yeah. And, uh, or Mike, or Smurf house, and then, and then he'd be <laughs> downstairs getting busy, right? Cranking and, it up. Get, man. Boy, I'm amazing. <laughs> and the crazy part about it is I always tell this story. Smurf is the guy that told me I should be a rapper. What? Yep. He said, Bone, man, DJ. <laughs> Bone the DJ. Man, your voice, though. Yeah, exactly. Your voice. Like, your voice is what it's all about, man. Because every time he will be going off on a turntable, I'll just be kind of freestyling and saying nothing. Yeah. But he'd be like, man, your voice and your cadence is crazy, man. You should be a rapper. Yeah. And at the time, I was like, man, you lost your mind, man. I'm a DJ, <laughs> right? Everybody want to be no rapper, right? <laughs> but um, years passed by, man, and, and I just kept writing and writing and 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 doing stuff and writing and writing. And, and before I knew it, I was, you know, I, I fell in love with hip-hop from a – a theatrical thespian type of situation mm. where I really invested in the craft and understood what that meant to be a part of what the sound of music was. Not just hip hop, just music. Because I've always, as a kid, behind, mm -hmm. I always wrote hooks and sounds in my head. Yeah, yeah. Right? I'm talking about when I was younger, I'd just be writing hooks, hook, mm -hmm. hook in my head. I didn't know what a hook was. Yeah. But I would be listening to like Luther Vandross, Billy Holiday, you know what I mean? Cap Calloway from my grandmother and them. Yeah. And and I'll just be singing along with it, and I'll just be singing all the words. So it, it, it just, I never knew what that was, and at the time in Atlanta, it wasn't no hip hop scene. What was the first song out of Atlanta that you had to put on repeat, though, Bone, that you oh, would say, this is my damn jam? Oh. Eliminator by Raheem, what else? <laughs> What else? I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. Because, yeah. see, I'm trying to imagine yeah. the bone crusher in that booty shake era. Yeah. And where was your mindset at? Because yeah. the music you would come with yeah. ain't going to be the music that no, raised no, you. No, you no, see no, what I'm no, saying? No, 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 no. So, but then also, how were you able to enjoy that music at that time? Oh, um... I, I like I like booty shake music. That's where I'm from. No, we all love it. That's what yeah. I'm saying. So but, what, I mean, but it, it's that's Florida, though. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We, 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 we... Southerners all connect, mm -hmm. whether it's Florida, Alabama, Georgia, you know, well, Mississippi, Louisiana, wherever, we connect. Yeah. And through that connection, there's a grassroot of synergy that goes through that dirt and through that energy and that sound. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's more family-based, so of course I'm going to like Luke. Yeah. Of course I'm going to like Two Live Crew. Of course I'm going to like... Uh, Poison Clan. Of mm -hmm. course, I'm gonna like them, right? Yeah. Because I understand what they're saying. I understand their southern dialect, like myself. Mm -hmm. And you know, as like I say, man, I I love it, man. And hey, who don't like looking at women shake their boots? Come on now. Uh, whether it's uh, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm with you both. Okay. So now, when we think about the music and stuff at that time, right. and you got Raheem going crazy. Yeah. Young Bone talking about he want to be a DJ. Right. What were you doing during those times, man, with the music? You got the soundtrack, Raheem. He's the soundtrack. But right. what was Bone Crusher doing at that time? Uh, football. Okay. Uh, fighting. Yeah. <laughs> um, stop. Yeah. That's it. Football, fighting, stop eating. <laughs> uh, you know, just hanging out. In the hood, man. Shouts out to Adamsville. Yes, sir. Then I left Adamsville and I went over to the South Side, went to Banneker. Yeah, yeah. Um, didn't get no better. That's got worse in, in the South Side. I started <laughs> acting crazy over there. And um, I, I learned a very valuable lesson about that, man. As a kid, man, you can't beat everybody up. Mm. And every person I ever fought came back and jumped me at the Crystals <laughs> on Old National. So it was uh it was it was uh it was a learning situation for me, man, because I could have I learned, my mother told me, what did you learn and, and, and what's happening to you? And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Because I was sitting downstairs, face all swole up, yeah. you know, and, you know, thinking I can knock down buildings with a single bound. Yeah. Like I'm the Hulk or something. And <laughs> learned that I wasn't. I was human like everybody else. And yeah. it was very humbling for me mm. to get my ass whooped by about 20 people. 
<laughs> well, I mean, that's one thing too. You're not an ass whooper unless you've got oh, your yeah, ass yeah, whooped. Yeah, 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 and that's yeah, just about yeah, a yeah, damn yeah, lie. Yeah, yeah, one yeah, hand, yeah, watch yeah, the other. Yeah, yeah, so, okay, yeah. during that time when you learned that, okay, I can't be beating everybody's asses, what do you think is the difference between then and now? Because now everybody's shooting. Ain't nobody oh, been getting their butts I'd have been dead. I'd have been dead. <laughs> it's sad to say that because I hate to, uh, that our young people don't know how to take a lick and keep on kicking. You yeah. know, um, And to that point I just said earlier, you got to learn that you can't win everything and everything ain't about you and everything ain't about trying to uh, narcissistically take over everything either. Yeah, You have to realize that humility creates greatness. And that's what I think... Uh, the difference is between now and then yeah. that when I was in the neighborhood in Adamsville and I did in Point of Ridge and I didn't win every fight, mm-hmm. right? If it was today, I couldn't take that because of the fact that the scrutiny from social media, the people, total access to people yeah. is that don't, you don't care about or don't know mm-hmm. is in, you know, uh, affecting your psyche, your mind, your stability, your, Whatever. So these kids really have a psychological trauma that we didn't have to go through as as children. That's real. I mean, that, that's just the difference between now and then. These kids are now having to deal with, they can't even go home and run away from the, the, the bully on the street. They got to go home <laughs> and listen to the bully on the internet. Exactly. Right? And, and, and it's, um, it's, it's, it's very um, traumatic for them. It's, and they, they become very fragile. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that I think that our kids today are definitely have to learn that that, that doesn't really matter. These people that are talking crazy to you, you want to care about them in about 10 years anyway. You don't know them. You ain't going to see them again. Man, I can't even remember half the people from high school. Come on now. Unless you were like, super popular or like somebody that's like did something crazy. Yep. I don't remember nothing from high school. Yeah. Be quite honest with you. Come on now. So we got to keep, we got to understand that, that this is just a small blip in the matrix for you. Mm-hmm. Shake it off, figure it out and come back strong. Come on now. With that being said though, Bone, you come of age in Atlanta, mm-hmm. and you start to see all of these folks that you grew up with turning into rap stars and pop stars. Mm-hmm. What was going through your mind at that time? And mm-hmm. then how were you trying to figure out if right. you wanted to get into the game or not? Was it something that you knew right then? Oh, so-and-so that made it. I know damn well right, I can get in there. Right, right. Or was it one of them things like, I don't even know if I want to do this, but I'm going to slide and peek around. You know, the thing about it is, B.I., um, I was there with everybody coming up. So damn. I don't know what it was like to watch people from my generation Mm. Come up without me. Yeah. Right? So we're talking, you're talking Outcast, Goody Mob. That's the second wave of hip, Atlanta hip hop, right? That's right. Because the first wave is Shy D, Mojo, Raheem, Kilo. The Dream, Kilo, yeah. uh, A Town Players. Yeah, yeah. Things of that nature, right? Artists of that nature. That's the first wave of Atlanta, mm-hmm. right? And I didn't know them. I was fans of theirs. Yeah. Right? So the second wave was my peers. Yeah, right? exactly. Goody. Outcast, Jagged, mm-hmm. uh, Young Bloods, myself, you know, and the list Yin Yang, yeah. East Side Boys, Lil John. We all came up together, so I don't see it as something that I was kind of like envious of or mm-hmm. that nature because we was in a fight together. Yeah. And that's where, that's probably the reason why people love us so much mm-hmm. still to this day. Because even though we might have our own personal gripes or whatever, we mm-hmm. would just keep it amongst ourselves mm-hmm. and nobody would know about it. And still to this day, a lot of stuff that went between all of us, nobody knows because at the end of the day, we all friends and it's all bullshit at the end of the day. Yes. Let's just get this money. You know what I mean? Let's get this money. Let, let, let's enjoy the fruits of our labor and um, let's just be prosperous. And to this day, if I see Lil John, like I'm just out in Vegas with John, mm-hmm. if I see John, it's always love. If yeah. I see um, young bloods is always love. I see anybody from my era, mm-hmm. it's always love because we came up in this fight together and there was a lot of pain and a lot of hurt and eating bologna sandwiches yeah. and drinking Billy D, which is Coke 45, and, <laughs> and, 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 and really learning how to invest more in the craft. We weren't even thinking about money then, though. It was just really mm-hmm. about the music. Yeah. Because there wasn't no money. We weren't making no money. We didn't know, we understand there was no music business like that in Atlanta. Mm. We kind of cur- uh, curated yeah. that 
thought mm -hmm. and made it a plausible, plausible reality where we can all just come together and work together, especially with the black market house. Mm -hmm. You're talking about um, Cersei, Vince, Lil John, you know what I mean? And, and the LGs, shouts out to Cotton and Beza. Mm -hmm. Everybody was over there. Toomp, yeah. uh, Jagged, Goody, everybody came by. Too Short, yeah. everybody came by the black market house, shot videos there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, couldn't be a better player than me. Was mm. shot at the black market house. Come on now. When the young bloods weren't even out yet, they was on the porch jumping them and down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's that's Atlanta history. Yeah. Second wave. Yeah. Right? That's the key. The second wave of Atlanta was the staple that our children are now living off of. Yeah. yeah. The wealth that we built. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't even know it. See that? That's I think that's what's wrong. The structure of what we did. We didn't share with the children. Mm. We should have shared how we did it and how we stayed together as a family, even though we weren't beefing with each other sometimes. Yeah. But it wasn't real. It ain't real. You know, it is what it is. That was just some petty ego, yeah, anger man, here and there, but it ain't yeah. nobody done died. No, man, no, 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 ain't nobody dying. When you see the dungeon start to do their thing, right. though, Bone, yeah. what was going through your mind at that time when you said, okay, I see Cass and Good and mm -hmm. Organized Noise doing yeah. their thing, yeah. and you start to see the hip-hop come to Atlanta right. on a hip-hop form yeah. of things. Yeah, jamming. Yeah. Goody and, and Outcast were, were jamming. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Um, It's a lot of things that when it comes down to watching your peers and your friends – do jamming ass music. Come on now. That's that's inspirational. Mm -hmm. It's a friendly competition between camps. Mm -hmm. You're talking about rowdy, so so deaf, uh, organized noise, black market. Uh, and we were kind of pushing each other back then, mm -hmm. pushing each other for greatness, just kept pushing each other, pushing each other. And it was an underlying understanding that. I'm coming hard. You better come hard too. Exactly. You better come with your own sound too. Come if you on, notice, man. all those camps have different sounds. Facts. So we all came with our own sound because I don't want to sound like my brother. Mm -hmm. I want my brother to see what I have to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So that's to me just watching each camp come with their own sound mm -hmm. is what laid, once again, back to that, laid the foundation of what Atlanta is today. And just looking at the overall view. Of organized and goody and well, organized is goody. Organized yeah. with goody and outcast and and backbone and yeah. everybody came after that witch doctor. Yeah, these are um, you know these are staples in the city Facts. that need to be respected and revered by our younger artists that come in. But also we need to understand that, and I think Tip said it best. He said that every generation wants its own and. Mm. This generation deserves their own play. Yeah. But I think that they should understand that what they're doing to themselves as far as, you know, the detriment of the destruction and when the, the killing and the, and, and the shooting at each other is something that they should look at as a space of messing up their money. Yeah, exactly. Because that's all they, you know, they, they own the money thing, right? Come on now. Okay, Bone, when you speak about that uh, BME click, mm -hmm. ATL Giants, man, I mean, being with that family, what was that like at that time for you early on? Just learning. Yeah. Um, Rob Mack taught me a lot. Um, Vince, Lil John, Cersei, at that time, we were all young. Yeah. But they had they had an understanding of what they wanted to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And I liked it, because I understood what I wanted to accomplish. Exactly. Um, Business-wise, craft-wise, mm -hmm. um, I knew that this was some people that I should work with because they were forward-thinking, and I'm forward-thinking. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, as we grow, we figure out whether or not this is a good mix for you. Uh, always be friends with those guys, man. Good brothers, I, I, I love them all. But I had to take my own path mm -hmm. because I started seeing things a little differently mm -hmm. and the way I saw the way my energy was moving. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, and you understand this behind, mm -hmm. um, being in another facility, yeah. you have to grow. Yep. And I had to grow and understand that this is what I needed to do. So, you know, when I wrote Never Scared, I knew it was going to be something special. 
Mm-hmm. I didn't know it was going to be this special. But I knew it was going to be something <laughs> special because at that time, I was feeling really, you know, like the world was against me. Mm. You know, I, I had lost a couple of record deals. We were signed to Tummy Boy. The LGs were signed to Tummy Boy. We were signed to another label. Mm. It wasn't happening. I was trying to feed kids, man. Yeah. So, I'm, you know, I'm over at the Oomp house, a Big Oomp's house. Shouts out to Big Oomp. Yes, sir. Oomp, what up, though? Yeah. And uh, I um, I was in a Young Blood session. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I write for everybody. So Come on now. Uh, so I was writing some hooks for the for a song the Young Bloods was doing. And I had wrote this one hook. I was like, yeah, that ain't it. If you know anything about a Young Blood session back then, they just had a beat going for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> the beat just be knocking. <laughs> doom, 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 doom. All day beat just going loud, yeah. right? So I'm sitting there. You know, I'm writing. Pelly writing, which is Sean Paul. Mm-hmm. Uh, J-Bo doing his thing. He writing. And I'm sitting there, I think, man, I think Jim, one of them Jim Crow dudes, and I think Motown might have been in there, I think, maybe. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm sitting there, man, and I'm just like writing, 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 and writing, I'm like, outside of, da, da, outside of, <laughs> da, da, da. But the song yeah. wasn't the same song as the, the beat that it's on now, mm-hmm. right? So it's written, I wrote it, it was on a slower tempo. Mm-hmm. So I can manipulate words any kind of way. So I wrote it there, and I said, oh, man, this is crazy, mm-hmm. right? Man, this is crazy. Oh. I said, it don't fit this beat, though. I said, I'll just keep it, right? Yeah. So I ended up writing something else for the Young Bloods. I don't think it made it to the album or whatever. But. So I went over. I went back home, mm-hmm. and a good friend of mine who stayed like maybe two houses down from me, Avery Johnson, who okay. produced an episode, Yeah. he called me up. He said, hey, Bone, man, I got this beat. Mm-hmm. I said, cool. So I just walked over his house. He played the beat. <laughs> it came on. <laughs> and I had rolled an, I had I had did another hook to it. Come to find out, that one the hook. Avery told me the other day, he said, Boom, man, remember you wrote you had put another hook on it first. What? I said, Oh yeah? He said, Yeah. I said, man, I don't even remember that. He said, hey, but it wasn't all that. I said, that's probably why I don't even remember it, right? I write so much stuff behind me. I'm, I went whatever, too. Whatever. But uh, but then I wrote that that hook, and I said, man, I think this might work. And I just said it to it, and yeah. it just, just came out like that because I was so, man. I'll tell you something, brother. When I tell you I was going through so much then, man, I was broke. I didn't have nothing, man. I had Come kids. <laughs> bro. That's a recipe right there. Man, now. I'm trying to tell you. And and that's the anger. Yeah. And that's the perseverance that I felt. Yeah. Because I was going through so much. Man, I had to show these motherfuckers. I ain't never scared. And I felt like that when I said it. Yeah. And when I, it was crazy, man. Like, outside. It was like a blur just came out of me, man. Yeah. And it felt so genuine to me. Mm-hmm. I ain't give a damn what nobody else felt about it. Yeah. Right? And it felt so genuine to me when I said it that I walked out the booth because I'm like that. Yeah. I said, what you think, Avery? He said, man, it's jamming. I said, yeah, all right, cool. Let's go next one. Right? Yeah. We did a whole nother beat, another song, which was Gripping the Grain. <laughs> you know that's my song, I know. Bro. Yeah. We ended up doing Gripping the Grain the same day we did Never Scared. Oh, hell no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same day. <laughs> same exact day, bro. We was on one that day. And, um, so he produced both them damn tracks. Yeah, he produced both of them. Avery Johnson. Tell monster. Avery we need to do some conversating, man. Yeah, we do. I mean, them we tricks do. right there. I got to yeah. talk to that man about that shit. Yeah, man, we do. Oh, we my do. God. Yeah, man. So you went from never scared to yeah. gripping the grain in yeah. the same session. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what writers do. Okay, so you telling me you had two lead tracks from what would be a number one hip-hop album. Yeah. A tears Right. Did you realize at that moment when you was in there going crazy? Because obviously you went in there blacked out that goddamn yeah, yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you realize, oh, man, if I put just these two souls on the album no. together, it's going down. I, I never thought about music back then that way. It wasn't a business. It was it was love, inspiration. It was um, a space of total uh, power for me. Yeah. Call it arrogance, call it um, whatever you want to call it. I'm I was always in a space of 
I'm the hardest mother at walking. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've always been like that. Mm -hmm. But I always knew that that was not a way to be because you can't beat everybody. I said this before. You can't yeah. Beat I just. Uh, but I, I got myself in a space, man, where you know I was bodyguarding a lot of people back then too. Little yeah. John, China. You know, I was bodyguarding a whole bunch of people. Ti. Yeah. So for me, it was a. It was. It was just ordained to be that way. I got a question though, Bone. What's up? For you to be around, seeing what the dungeon is doing, you seeing what other folks is doing, and you right. hearing the different kinds of music. Yeah. But then when it's your go time, yeah. the sound had changed to a crunk sound, yeah. Yeah. which fit you yeah. perfectly. Right. Did you feel that? Did you understand that the energy and the music in Atlanta had changed, but it was actually perfect mm. for you to go crazy? No, um, I tell you, man, don't let nobody tell you a lie. Because I'm going to put it like this. Bone Crush is not going to be Bone Crusher on the organized noise track the same way he's right. going to be Bone Crusher on the crunk track. I mean, you're going to be Bone. You're going to do what you do, but that's a different kind of Bone. You ain't going to get the Never Scared Bone on a damn, uh, on a melodic soul track. We going to get yeah, love, uh, you and Storyteller Bone on there. But the, the thing about it is that it's a, it's a, um, it's all, put it like this, man. It's like you be high, right? Yeah. I got to explain it well. well, well it's, 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 it's this way. It hit home. Right. Yeah. So if you be high at high, mm -hmm. ain't you the same be high over here on Be High TV? That's right. But differently. That's true. You're still the same person. That's right. There's several, it's a kaleidoscope of things that be high can do. Yeah. But they still be high. Yeah. Right? The artists or artists, they can do all kinds of things. I, I got a gold country album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it's a it's a space of, it's entertainment. Mm -hmm. So if you hear me on Hot Heat mm -hmm. on a organized noise track with yeah. with, 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 with Backbone and, and, and Young Cool Lose, Breeze, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you hear me on Never Scared, it's the, it's the same guy, yeah. just in a different forum. Yeah. Right? And the art of it is, that it's a space of creativity. Mm -hmm. And that creativity has no boundaries mm. as long as it's good. Yeah. If it ain't good, it's like, uh, you need to go back to what you're doing. Yeah. But if you're good at it, you should continue on, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's a space of, I hate when they try to cubbyhole artists mm -hmm. into this one little box. Yeah. And, it, and that's not the case. Artists are different in every canvas. When you paint a different canvas, you you're not the same. You're not painting the same canvas over and over and over and over and over yeah. and over and over again, right? Yeah. You're painting one picture this way, another picture that way. Whatever you're feeling. Yeah. As long as that feeling is genuine to you mm -hmm. as an artist, you have that right, and fans will like it or not like it. Mm -hmm. But if, if it's genuine to you, usually, the ones that really like creativity, those mm -hmm. are the ones that gravitate toward that. Yeah. Those that don't will go back to what they like. Mm -hmm. But they can have different selections of what of you, right? Yeah. They have different selections of this. And it's just like, well, even with my new album, it's different selections of me. Mm -hmm. If you listen to Ten Chun all the way, the album of Ten Chun, yeah. if you get all the way from Never Scared to The Wall, The Wall is an inspirational song yeah. talking about love, compassion, and our people overcoming struggles. Mm -hmm. I, I got a song with Goody Mob on my album, man, which is one of the most amazing records, yeah. right? Why We Hate Ourselves. My God. It's about self-love, self-understanding. This is in 2003. I was doing this before anybody was doing it. Before any of these rappers are doing it now, yeah. I've been talking about this. I've been living this. I've been telling people to love themselves, take care of themselves. Yeah. You know, Don't worry about nobody else. It's all about ethics and code and whatever. That's what I've always been about, yeah. right? So this is what it is. This new album is going to be a whole dynamic of that. Mm -hmm. You're going to have up oh, bone crusher. You're going to have inspirational bone crusher. You're going to have mm -hmm. all kinds of bone crusher. But I've worked so hard on each one of those particular areas, mm -hmm. Beha, that when I play my album for people, they just it just feels pure to them. As a writer, though, Bone, what studio session was the one that you felt like you was just in pocket and you knew when you left out of that studio session you had laid it all on the damn line? Man, um, 
Let me see. I've been so many studios. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, uh, uh, man, I did a session with Mariah Carey in Miami, mm. and JD set it up, and this was one of the first times that someone that I actually admired as yeah. an artist, I had a chance to work with, <laughs> yeah. right? One of the people, you know, yeah. I work with a lot of people, but Mariah, at the time, uh, she came in the studio, Randy was there, yeah, uh, and JD hit me out the blue, he said, hey man, go over there to the studio, and um, I got a session for you. I said, cool, bet. So I go over, I didn't know it was Mariah, yeah. so I got in there, I was like, he's like, and Mariah walked in, I was like, oh man, this is crazy. <laughs> what is this, what is this? That Mariah came. Right, right. And it was a song called The One, mm -hmm. and it was a remix of one of her big records, and she did a whole remix album. Yeah. And um, I was very fortunate to be in the company of that greatness and Randy, mm. um, and it was, it was I was all the way in. I was singing, <laughs> rapping, you know what I'm saying? That that record, you know, it, 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 it did what it did, but yeah. I was happy to be in the setting of that, mm -hmm. right? It it showed me that there there's ways for me to show my other sides of who I am, and I can capitalize off of the person that I am as a person. Yeah. Um, and my art and my craft. And all I'm saying, man, is just I can't wait for people to hear my album, my the God. new one. The no, new I one can't too. wait to hear that thing too, Bone. Yeah, yeah. During your time as a security guy, yeah. What was it like having to break folks off? Uh, trying to keep folks from dying out here in these streets. Um, I, I had a, I had a, 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 I had a, a very cordial way of handling people. Okay, a punch in the goddamn mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't, you can't beat the whole club up. <laughs> that's true. You know what I mean? And, and that's the key. Yeah. If I respect you, you'll respect me, and and that's really how it worked. Yeah. I never had any altercations ever, ah. ever, ever. I had to body a couple of times, get out to get my artists out the club, but it had nothing to do with my artists. Yeah, it was because the club was going crazy. Yeah, but other than that, I had no problems. I've always respected people because I'm a thug. Yeah, from when I was a kid. Yeah, so I understand the rules and regulations of the neighborhood and the hood. I I, I go in respecting everybody. Mm -hmm. I let people know where I stand. Yeah, I tell people how I am as a person, and I let them be who they are as a person. Yeah, and it's a mutual respect. Mm -hmm. And that mutual respect has gotten me through a lot of problems. Did you ever have security when you went to number one bone and everybody was trying to get to you every five minutes? And what was that like nah. being that you didn't have security nah. and you just working your move out here in these streets? Not at first. Um, I never had security. Okay, I'll I tell you why I had to get security. Mm -hmm. Not because I was worried about no problems, but mm -hmm. I was my manager at the time, Scat. Shout out to Scatter Man. This guy said, hey, bone man, you need to get a man, uh, uh, you need to get a uh, bodyguard. Yeah. I said, um, why? He said, man, listen, do you know what's happening to you? I said, uh, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> he said, uh, he said, he said, no, nah, man, let me tell you something. It ain't for that, it's for the fans. You gotta be careful. I said, all right, man, whatever. So we stopped at a mall <laughs> one time down here in South Georgia. Yeah. And me and Cottonmouth went in the mall mm -hmm. to get some sneakers. Now I walked my happy self up in there thinking it's uh I'm I'm regular. Green Brian. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like it's a regular deck like I'm regular deck. Yeah. At the time I'm like number <laughs> one on the uh, chart. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh I walk in the mall. Yeah. And it's pandemonium by the time I get to the Foot Locker. My God. So I gotta run out of the Foot Locker <laughs> to get back to to the bus. I'm like, man, this is crazy. Yeah. This scat nigga be like, <laughs> told you, nigga. I tried to tell you, dummy. <laughs> you didn't get a. I did it a couple of times, man. I walked down through Times Square. I was, I had a billboard in Times Square. I'm walking down there through it like it's all good. This is for social media, so fans are not able to see you all the time. Yeah. So they don't get like this entitlement to you. Exactly. It's more of a admiration type of yeah. thing because they don't get to see you a lot. Yeah. And man, it got crazy down in Times Square for me. So, at that time, I said, "Man, I can see." Yeah, I just need to get a bodyguard. So yeah. I got one, and we had fun. My boy, Big Al, man, we had a good time. Man, we had a good time. Attention, man! Celebrating twenty years this yep. year, though, Bone. Yep. Yep. 
Where did the time go? How fast did those 20 years from that time to now go in your mind? And yeah. then also, did you think that that album was going to stand the test of time like it has? Yep. Because of where I came from. Mm -hmm. Now, I came from a live band. Mm -hmm. I performed for many years in front of the, uh, I was a front man for a band called The Chronicle here in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. And that's Lil John, Avery, yeah. the bass player that did Never Scared. Yeah. Uh, L Rock, who produced Yeah with Lil John. Yeah. Uh, uh, Billy Odom, Bill Davis, right? Yeah. So I was the front man for them, and I rock all the time with them. So I, I got myself into understanding of what timeless music was because we were making music from scratch that nobody knew, and the line was down the block, mm -hmm. right? And understanding the musicology of what the sound of forever trending groove is, mm. is what uh, Never Scared is. Mm -hmm. Never Scared feels like that because I wrote it in a sonic space of pure joy, understanding of music. Yeah, That's why when people hear it, they don't really get angry. Like they get up, they get yeah. up. It's an up groove, it's happy. Mm -hmm. right? Even though I'm talking about I'm outside of the club, you think I'm a punk and all that, but it's more of a, like I'm not stopping for nobody. And that's the way I think people, I always write about topics that people will always feel for the rest of their life. People mm -hmm. will always be angry, they will always be happy, they will always be upset, they will always be this, they will always be that. In love. And, and right, they always be in love. Yep. I never write about what's happening today. Yeah. Like today is old by the time it gets to, the day old now. Come on. What we just talked about is old now. So only way I can beat that is to write about things that are forever. Okay, Bone, this is a question, man, and this is a damn good question. Right. Now, you told me that when you went in there to record that Never Scale, right. you had the weight of the world on your shoulders, you got little kids that need to be fed, Right. you stressed out because you ain't got no deal, you don't know what the hell's going on. Right. But then you go on to have one of those kind of careers that are made in fairy tales, okay? <laughs> you see what I'm I saying? Guess. Well, now, buddy... How many rappers got a video game? Yeah, I got one of those. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. How many rappers get nominated for Grammys? Right. How many folks have number one albums? Right. How many folks go around the world and able to sing their stuff for 20 years right. past when it dropped? Right. You see what I'm saying? Right, right, Television right. and everything else involved with it. It's a right. lot of artists that have put out that record. They put out that record, and that's all they did. Okay. right. right. Everything that happened after you blew, was it everything that you imagined and expected, or did it far exceed your expectations? I tell you, the only thing that that that, that uh, blew my mind was that New York, the way New York embraced Never Scared. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that really blew my mind. Like the fact to watch, um, you know, the people of New York City to enjoy it the way that we were enjoying it in Atlanta was mind boggling to me, especially after, you know, the way that we as Atlantans uh, were, you know, looked at as coming from, you know, New Northerners come here and say we this or that, whatever. But I've always had this non-regional diction. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't shocked, mm -hmm. but I was like, wow, I can't believe the way the city of New York is really, and the North, just in general, not just New York, Philadelphia, Boston. I was just kind of shocked at the fact that they liked it as much as we liked it. Um, but other than that, though, man, I think that my career, uh, for as long as it's been, and it's been so much, mm. I think you know the real reason, though, behind to be totally, totally honest with you, uh, that I'm so unselfish. Yeah. I think that's the reason why I've lasted so long. Yeah. Because I'm constantly giving to people. Yeah. Even when I don't have nothing to give, I give it to people. Here you go. Right. I just give yeah. it out. I have my cup be empty. I'll be still giving it. Come on. Man, I've helped so many. Man, bro, let me tell you, man. I've helped so many people and didn't have nothing to give. Yeah. That's all I did, man. That's all I did, man. I, I helped Banner, Till, yep. Killer, every. You mean I could just name the people, bro. Yeah. And, and you, I mean, you know, Come on. I, I mean, I helped so many people. Exactly. That, you know, it's, it's a space of. For me, I think that's the reason why I've lasted this long because I, I understood that community was everything and our people were everything, and you know. 
when you find yourself a video game character, or right. when you find your song getting added to Madden football games, yeah. this is ridiculous, Bone. That's what I'm trying to understand. <laughs> when those calls start coming in, and you think, yeah. okay, this ain't got nothing to do with music. Nah. It's got something to do with music, but I, it's about me now. I never saw it like that, though. I've always thought about it as a we thing. Even when I was getting my accolades, I was always trying to figure out how we could connect as a community. To be quite honest with you, be high. Def Jam fight for New York. Bone Crusher, the character. They got the. It wasn't me on your back acting like an extra character fighting with I've you. I've always that saw it that, that way. That was the Bone Crusher character. Doing I've that. always saw it that when way. When you man. said, "Okay, I was just struggling," now I'm on a damn video game. I've always saw it that way. How long have you known me, high? I don't know. You probably a good fifteen. As years. long as you've known me, what kind of person am I? The same every damn time. And what I'm always doing. Happy, smiling, and having a good time. And what am I always doing other than that? Cooling out. Am I helping people? Oh, helping. <laughs> helping niggas, yes. Yes. That's how I see it. I've always been like that. I mean, even when I was at the height. Yeah. The height of it. Were I you was prepared for that height when you got there? I was prepared for it for what had to be done for the South. That's when Kanye said what he said. Mm. Right? Because he saw me doing it. Yeah. So he's like... Uh, I'm telling y'all, I saw this dude. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, shouts out to Ye. Yes, but sir. uh he saw me. He was like, yo, man, like, who does that? Like, who who goes to the top of the mountain yeah. and starts sharing wealth the while they're climbing? Form. Exactly. Right. I'm get, I'm giving out my picks and axes and I'm climbing to the top. Right? That's right. So you know, I'm on Hot 97 talking about Tip mm -hmm. and talking about Banner and Killer and Lil John and mm -hmm. and Yin Yang Twins, the Young Bloods. I'm talking about them while I'm on my radio show, just like I'm doing right now. Yeah, yeah. Right? I'm with you. I've always believed in that, man. I think that I don't know what that is in me. Yeah. Uh, my grandpa taught me that. You know, community is everything, and if you don't have it, we're nothing. And that's how I see life. I'm talking about the ying and the yang. I'm right. talking about the ying of the <laughs> kids yeah. and hunger. But the money was coming in, though. The, the, the money. I, I want to think about the money. But the money was out there. The yang part. What was the, what was the balance to it all? So what did as far as you went down, you went up high. Yeah. And I want to know, how did you feel when you got to I the high good. side? I felt good. Okay. I felt great. Man, that's what I'm saying. Because it's so like you didn't enjoy a damn thing. You just said, let me help everybody. I didn't enjoy it. I love, let me tell you something. I love the craft of music. Yeah. More than the Oculus. Mm. More than the money. Yes. <laughs> to be honest with you. Because if I do, if, if I'm good at my craft. Yeah. And if I'm good at what I do, I will always get the money. Yeah. The money is just a residual thing of something that I've invested in. Yeah. So if I, my investment is about my music and my sound and my people, I will always be taken care of, mm -hmm. right? That's why I ain't never been broke. When the money came in, how did that make you feel, Bone? Good. And how did that change your life, oh, too? For the better. Financially, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing about it is that financially, yeah, I did okay. You know? Yeah. I did all right. But the thing is that that wasn't what it was about for me. Yeah. I didn't really see it like that. Mm -hmm. But what I do see yeah. is that I see the South winning. Yeah. I see Atlanta's the number one place to, to find rappers. I had a big part in that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that was my contribution to the city. Yeah. Right? When I was up, I knew that we had to be a, a tribe. Yeah. Right? And that's the way I saw it. So um, that's why, once again, I never was worried about the money. I didn't do it for money. Be I'll be honest with you, man. I, I didn't. First of all, I didn't know it was no money. Man. We had, we had a couple of record deals here and there, man. But I was, man, I was just, you know. And and and, and when I went for it for myself, I made some money. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I felt like when I was on top, that people that were in my circle would do it for me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. A lot of them didn't. Yeah. Some of them did, right? But that's not what I did it for. Each generation, we have to have selfless people that come into the game. Right. That pull up other folks to maintain the game. Right. And I think we got to a point in Atlanta to where nobody pulled up other talented people. Because, see, don't get it messed up 
Bone, you still had an eye for talent for of the course. people that you were helping. So it wasn't like you were like, let me go help my little cousin over here. It was like, okay, better. Yeah. You go be something. Right. Let's rock out. Right. You see what I'm saying? John, right. I already know what you're doing. Let's go ahead and do it. Right. Tip, you go be something. Let's right. rock out. I can right. see it. Right. So sharing your platform with folks so they can become mega superstars at the same time right. hasn't occurred on a regular basis, and I think that's what made Atlanta, Atlanta, because you had so many people working together and pulling each other up, right, all the way up until Absolutely. a certain point to where it was every man for himself. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? I remember when I was at the radio station, before we got to the point of where we was at right now, right, where nobody's come out of Atlanta since Lil Baby, right. I remember thinking to myself, I said, man, I see this, dude, we about to go down the wrong path. Right. Let me run as many folks through this radio station as I damn can. There you go. To give folks the opportunity to go get a record deal, That's to be right. seen, That's and right. to get their record uh, broke. You That's see what I'm right. Saying? That's right. That, it wasn't fun for me to have to do that, but I knew it needed to be done at that time because right. if it didn't get done, a lot of folks weren't going to get the opportunities right. that they would have eventually gotten. Yeah. What do you think happened to the city to where nobody's willing to, you know, take that? It ain't even taking the L for the team. It's taking the responsibility for trying to make sure other people are successful. Um, It ain't in them. Mm. It ain't for everybody. Damn. It's for you. It's for yeah. me. It's for those that, that understand it. Uh, everybody's not going to get it. And that's not their position in life. It's my position to be who I am. It's your mm -hmm. position to be be high. Mm -hmm. It's his position to be whoever he is. Her position to be whoever she is. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, when I help, when, when Story and I helped Lotto, yeah, we didn't ask. Out. We didn't ask for no dollars. I didn't yeah. ask for nothing. I saw a young lady that needed needed some assistance. Yeah. Um, so How yeah. do you feel now when you see her uh, winning these awards and you oh, was thinking it. yourself? I remember when you was just fresh out trying to figure it out. Right. And now you done blew all the way up. I love it. I love it, man. I'm glad that she's doing it. I'm glad she's doing what she's doing. Uh, she's finding her way. Mm -hmm. um, she's becoming a, a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm very proud of her. Exactly. Very proud of her, man. I'm glad she's doing it. I'm proud of her family, of her dad, Shane, and her mama. Um, I just, I'm just really proud of her, man. I see her, and she's keeping her sister close to her, which I love a lot. Yeah. I love that she's keeping Brooklyn around her, and I think that's very dope. Mm -hmm. um, that's what it's about, man, you know, and... Um, I'm just proud of her, man. I'm really proud of her and anybody else that we've helped over the years. That just goes to show that eye for talent, though, still. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because you right. ain't going to just help anybody. It's no. got to be somebody no. that you know going to be somebody yeah. at the same time, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and it's, and it's a lot of times you help people that are hungry yeah. and that are talented at the same yeah. time. You know, me helping you be a yep. artist and you should be a janitor. I need to go find a job for you sweeping flows, <laughs> right? That's the difference. I can't make you be something you're not. It's just like we said earlier. I'm with you. Why people ain't doing this and they doing that? Because it ain't in them. Exactly. You know, and most times people will lead, people will follow by example. Mm -hmm. And that example is what you're doing behind. I mean, you're doing great things, man. Thank you, sir. And that's that's the reason why I'm here. Doing this interview, exactly. bro. I don't do interviews. <laughs> I know. Right? So I'm too busy to be doing interviews. Come on now. And when my album comes out, I'm going to do an interview. But I, <laughs> man, I'm out here trying to figure it out. I'm trying exactly. To out, I'm trying to figure out how to save the planet. Exactly. Right. Right? And help, one, help one brother at a time, one sister at a time. <laughs> Maybe a group or two, you know? I mean, this is what it is. I'm just telling the truth, brother. I'm with you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now, when it comes to the Atlanta that we have now, though, man. Yeah. When you started to see the artists pass in the city, oh, man, man, as an OG recalling, yeah. so, because you know, what people don't understand, yeah. there's a plaque on this wall right here. Right. Half the people on the song are dead or in jail. Oh my God. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's crazy to me right there when I it, see that. Yeah, it that's be. a whole generation that was supposed right. to, you know, carry the torch right. that has been extinguished. And I don't know if anybody recognizes it. I think folks are starting to feel it now. Right. You know, because at the end of the day, I hate to say it, Atlanta was carrying hip hop too. Yep. When Atlanta ain't got nothing to show, then guess what? It ain't no number one song in hip hop this year. Wow. That is true. You see Very what true. I'm saying? Exactly. But Atlanta don't show up. Then it's over. Right. How do you feel when you see it's heart where it's progressed to, man? It's heart wrenching. Yeah. To watch these young artists get on, spend all their money and time and effort, uh, make the money um, that they've been working hard for, uh, getting the accolades that they've, they've been working hard for, um, mm -hmm. 
invested in their craft the way they've been working for and then to be, um, you know, untimely killed or murdered or cancer, whatever's the problem. Yeah. Um, it's heart wrenching to watch it, bro. And and that's another reason why I'm coming back musically. Mm. Um, I think that our kids are not connected to the OGs the way they should be. Mm -hmm. I think that our kids aren't seeing an example of what money could look like when it's uh, in its latter stages of life. Mm. Um, we 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 equate um, youth with making brand new grooves or brand new sounds when in actuality um, music is not a physical thing, it's a mental thing. Yeah. And as long as um, the person or persons have the ability to make fantastic grooves, they should. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me, I have been neglecting the city in a major, very egregious way mm. where I need to bring my butt back yeah, because I'm watching our kids go through this type of trauma. And it goes back to the reason why they're going through this type of trauma is because they have their fans have total access to them at all mm -hmm. times. Um, mm. And a lot of times you don't need to be having total access to your fans and your fans don't need to have total access to you, mm -hmm. right? Because what happened is that your creativity begins to get very mute mm. because you're trying to appease people that you can't appease. You got millions and millions of people following you and watching you all the time. It creates something called narcissism. And that inner look at yourself all day <laughs> kind of creates a glass ceiling for you. Yeah, And it can become very volatile in a space where you start to believe that you either A, the greatest thing since sliced cheese or the yeah. worst thing since corrosion. Mm. And to watch kids go through that, you gotta realize artists already are not getting trained in any kind of counting schools, classes yeah. where they can learn about the math and the numbers and the money they're making. They're not going through any kind of A&R mm -hmm. situation where there's a, a person's telling them, hey man, this is what you should do. You should do this, you shouldn't do that. Don't go down there, man, because it's crazy. Yeah. Don't go over here because it's crazy. Yeah. And a lot of these cats, man, they say they're from the hood, but mm, some of them ain't. <laughs> a lot of them are, but some yeah. of them ain't, yeah. right? And they putting up, putting up um, things that ain't real. Yeah. So we gotta make sure that if you're not a gangster, you're not the type of person that has that life, why don't you make music the way you are as a person? I think the reality of what it is, is that watching these kids go through what they're going through, man, it's a lot of PTSD going on in our community yeah. right now. Yeah. A lot of it. And we're watching kids go through it at an early age where they shouldn't be, when they should be having a good time, going on spring break, enjoying life, not having somebody in their ear all day, learning about lessons of life, falling down, getting up. Yeah, This is what the problem is in our community, that our kids are growing up way too fast. They're starting to see things way too quickly. Yeah. And now they're starting to grow up when they shouldn't be. You know, mm -hmm. I mean? and it's like a, a chicken being hatched in three days. Yeah, it's not going to be the healthiest chicken you eat. Hell no. Uh, so um, that's the same way with our kids. Our kids are growing up in a fast, rapid way that they're not being able to adjust mm -hmm. to the world coming at them. You know, and watching these kids, like even looking at that board up there, watching some of those guys up there yep. that have passed or in jail yep. or in spaces they shouldn't be in because someone didn't sit down and have a good heart to heart with them and tell them that they are special, yep. that they are something great. And it's okay to fall down. It's yep. okay to make a mistake. It's okay to do this. And that's the problem that our kids are not being able to adjust to things in a way that other people are. Yeah. Be quite honest with you. For you, Bone, you done helped so many folks. Coming yeah. up in the game, yeah. who mentored you and gave you some of the game along the way, man? A little bit of everybody, man, you know. Um, my grandparents, mm -hmm. um, I listen to some of my peers too, man. Like I listen to Toomp, I listen to yeah. Jazzy, my woman. You yeah. know, I listen to a lot of people, I read a lot of books. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I'm reading a book by Kurt Flood uh, called A Well-Paid Slave, mm. and it's um, about um, the um, he's the guy that started the disruption of mm -hmm. the Major League Baseball, which in turn created free agency, free agency for all athletes. Mm. And I found a lot of him inside of me. Mm. And you know, I'm, 
I'm reading that now. Yeah. But um, but I've also um, you know, Maynard Jackson, Andrew Young, John Lewis, mm-hmm. um, Ali Pat. Break down that well-paid slave to me, though, man. Yeah. What was it that you could identify with in that book? Well, I, I just think that um, Mr. Flood, he um, he understood that he was not going to be always, he's not a person that's going to be a, a slave to the system. Mm. When someone tells you you got to move, you got to move. He mm. said, oh, no, I'm not doing that. I like where I'm at. <laughs> That's like somebody coming here right now and say, "Bi, come on, it's time for you to move now." You're like, "Hey, man, wait a minute, man. Um, 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 I like it here." Exactly. You know, and that's where, um, the the energy of being able to make your own choices mm-hmm. as a human yeah. is essential. That's why I think it gravitated with me so much that the fact that he made so much uh, fuss. Mm-hmm. And he created such a uproar in the fact that to make others that were like him, which is us, mm-hmm. of the same color, say, hey, man, listen, this is just a new way of treating us like way they want to treat us. Mm-hmm. You want to take us and move us where you want to move us? You want to take us and shackle us and take us and boot over? No, nah, I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sue the league. Mm-hmm. So that's what he did. He got himself in a position. He was a very smart brother. Yeah. Um, he, he sued him and told him, hey, man, I'm not going nowhere. I want to go where I want to go. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason why we have free agency right now. It's crazy. Because of Kurt Flood. Thanks, Kurt. No, ha, he, ha, ha, no ha. he did that, man. Right, he did right, that. Right. Okay. In the music industry, though, Bone, what were some of the main things that you learned that you care to share with the next generation watching this video right now? Um, What I learned was you're not always going to be right. Mm-hmm. And you're not always going to, um, you're not going to be victorious in everything you ever do. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I also learned is that perseverance is always the victor. Mm-hmm. You can never allow yourself to believe that you're less than the things that you believe that you are. Mm-hmm. If you understand the principles of greatness, you must always strive for that. Mm-hmm. Um, some don't, um, but. What I will say this to all the young people and people that are listening, that if you find yourself in a space where you think the world is against you, mm-hmm. it's not. Mm. No one cares. You're in your own way. Get out of your own way, <laughs> right? Find what you like to do and pursue it. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody's on their own mission. Never think that your mission is affecting someone else's mission because it's not. Mm-hmm. And if it is, it's not. What was the craziest place that you found yourself singing your song that you was like, okay, how the hell did this song get me in this damn room? Um, man, doing um, Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> I was the first guy to ever perform crunk music on those type of platforms. What? Yeah. So I did Colin O'Brien. I did all the shows, man. So it was a, it was it was fun to be. Um, able to do that trailblaze. Well, see, that goes back to what I was kind of hitting the ground earlier on when I was talking about the crunk <laughs> music and bone. Because see, the crunk music allowed your star to shine. Yeah, you I never considered my music crunk music though. But no, but when you got crunk, it got crunk in that thing, yeah, bone. Yeah, I mean, if you got to put a definition. You see on, what I'm yeah. saying? I wouldn't just. You know, put you right there, but when it came to getting crunk, yeah, Bone was gonna crank that thing up. Yeah. But then also, a lot of folks got crunk, but just to be a star, yeah, it was bigger than. See, your crunk transcended the yeah. music to yeah. television, radio, and yeah. film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, see what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So, what do you think it was about you, Bone, yeah. that allowed your personality? Because yeah. it wasn't just the music. Right, right. It was what was inside you just yeah. anyway that you, got you up through there. What uh, do you think it was about you that made I, you so special? I think it's a, um, my synergy of energy is a, a different kind of power. Mm-hmm. I've always, um, I don't know what it is, man. Since I was a kid, man, my grandmother said I was blessed. Yeah. And I I don't know what that is, man. It's like angels are watching me or something. I don't know. Yeah. But I've always had this ability 
to move people. Even when I was a kid, mm -hmm. when I used to run my own crew of people when yeah. I was in high school fighting, and and I was always responsible for other people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it is. I think I don't. I, to be quite honest with you, be high. I, I just think that my energy transcends throughout different races. Yeah. And yeah. I think people like me because I'm likable. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Now, that's a good point, too. How you many know. folks did you meet when you got into the game that you realized that this fool ain't likable at all? A lot of them. And I ain't saying no names. how did that make names. you feel then? When it, you ain't got to say no names, but how yeah. did that make you feel when you're thinking, I'm finally in the game, I'm in the room, but yeah. I don't like none of these folks in here. Let me go home. That's, I mean, to be quite honest with you, that's one of the reasons why I departed. <laughs> It felt it felt ungenuine to me. I feel you, Bone. Don't get no yeah. no. You left and left me in the lions there, but continue. I felt I felt like I've um, you know I'm a very transparent person. Mm -hmm. I tell you what I feel and I, and I feel what I say. That's right. So when I say something, I mean it. Mm -hmm. If I tell you I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. If I tell you I'm not gonna do something, I'm not gonna do it either. Yeah. Right. So that's to me was a space that the music business is not in. Mm -hmm. So you tell me something, I believe it. Yeah. Because I'm like that. If I tell you something, I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, if you agree to it, this is what it ain't, or whatever. But this is what I agree to, so I stick to the code. Exactly. Right? But when it comes down to that, I realize very quickly that the entertainment business is 90% facade, 10% maybe. So I didn't like neither one of them outcomes, so I left, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. And I just went back and hung out with my kids for a little bit and yeah. tried to figure out my thing and, I, and just try to figure out what I was going to do with my music. So I, I kind of introverted into myself and started figuring out, hey, man, how am I, how am I going to return? Yeah. And that took a 20-year hiatus uh, from just – bringing Bone Crusher back. Now, it ain't taking me 20 years ideas from the music business yeah. and entertainment because I was still writing working. for people, working, yeah. and, and uh, you know, Crusher Consulting is That's still right. viable. But um, but just my music and working on my album is just something that I, it had to, for me, it had to feel as special to me as it did to the fans. Mm -hmm. So... That's why it took me so long. And I, I say it all the time on Instagram, man, I, I, I like to thank people for waiting, those that are still waiting yeah. for the music to come because when you when you hear it, it's going to probably be the dopest album ever made to My me. My God. Now, I'm here for that. 50 years of hip-hop, though, Bone. Yeah. At the rate we going with hip-hop, do you think we're going to get another 50 years of it, man? Um. Yeah. Why not? Because it's turning into a grown man sport. It used to be a young man sport because the young folks was keeping it going, but the young folks ain't around long enough to keep it going. I done had conversations with some of my young G's out here. Right, right. And they say, B, when I get your age, I ain't going to be able to see none of my favorite rappers because they all going to be dead in jail. Wow. That's a terrible realization, man. Yeah, he was like, man, I, I, a lot of them are gone now. So it's right. like by the time they get back and they want to relive their 20s, right. everybody's gone. I just think it's um now there are other types of rap music out there. Mm -hmm. Other types of urban grooves are out yeah. there. They're, the problem is everybody's trying to go through the same needle hole. Yeah. This what I can pride our generation on is that we had different types of sounds inside of one sound. Mm -hmm. Right? I didn't sound like Tip, Tip didn't sound like Yin Yang and vice versa and all other stuff. You know what I mean? And Pastor Troy didn't sound like us. So it was more of a it was, we had our own lane, so we never really conflicted with each other because I'm not in your world, although we share the same condo building. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying to you? I'm with you. Right? So the key to it is, I think that the young artists nowadays, because they want their own, they should really go into that. You should want your own sound, your own vibe, your own energy inside of the condo building, mm -hmm. which is Generation Z, right? Mm -hmm. That that generation is so stuck in one lane that it's difficult. It's like a traffic jam. Mm -hmm. We can't all go the same way on the same lane. Mm -hmm. There's four lanes there. We can go the same way. Mm -hmm. But if it's too many people in the, on the highway, what happens? We backed up for hours. 
right? So that's what's happening now. They just the only problem is that they just congest it. I gotta ask this though, Bone, because this is kind of how I feel as well when it mm-hmm. comes to music. In your time, you had people like Jermaine Dupri mm-hmm. that would push the button on different acts and different talent, yeah. which kept it fresh. You had Jericho Wade's and Organized Noise that would push the button on different talents and keep it fresh. Be on me the same thing. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I don't, I don't really want to blame the artist so much as the people that you, can push the button to put talented people in it, position. It, that's virtually impossible now. Because people can put their own stuff out on their own platform. But still, if you're a PD at a radio station, you can push the button on somebody. If you're a record exec at a record label, you can push the button on somebody. And my whole thing is, why ain't nobody pushing the buttons on the talent versus the bag? Okay, the bag will make me push the button automatically. Right. But I didn't put people on the radio because of no bag. Right. I would say, send me your song. If it's if I, jamming, if I like it. I'm going to run it. I don't want no money from you. I just The song just need to be jamming. I think, and I would say, don't send me nothing about killing nobody either. Yeah, but the thing about it is, who's going to do that besides a person? Uh, put it like this. If you're in a space where you have the power, mm-hmm. you didn't receive that power unless you own the station by buying the station. Mm-hmm. You're not the person that can control the narrative of the energy that's going on in your business, mm. right? You are a person that that's why you on your own platform because you can't control the narrative <laughs> of your own platform on somebody else's place. Exactly. Exactly. I'm so with you. I can't as a PD, right? We mm. can't blame the PDs either. Mm. I can't blame a PD for having to program songs that day bosses is telling them. Listen, I'll give you a couple of records that you can do, mm. but the majority of this has to be a playlist because, a, 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 you know this as a radio person, yeah. a stationary playlist of so many songs, 30-some songs, that have to play in rotation in order to generate money for the station, which in turn sells for commercials in between. The music is really there for the sale commercials, mm-hmm. right? That brings re- generation, uh, revenue for the company, which is the radio station. Right, and if there's something going on with the streets, or saying this and that and this and that, and you're like, oh man, well I gotta go with what's going on in the street mm-hmm. because I gotta make sure this it's a, it's a vicious cycle of foolishness. But it's it's in a space of put it like this, behind. I did it, mm-hmm. but only reason I did it is because I wasn't inside of that structure. Yeah. The reason why you're doing it is because you're not inside of another another man's structure, yeah. right? You're not in another company structure. So you can say, hey, little baby, I like that record. I'm going to play it on my platform because it's mine, right? But then, Bone, you was a disruptor. Right. When you go up to New York and you're doing your radio interview and you say, okay, yeah, this is supposed to be about me, but I'm going to shout out him, 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 and him because I'm trying to disrupt this game. Right. If I'm in a radio station, I say, okay, yeah, I know we got a playlist, but I'm going to play him, 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 and him because I'm going to disrupt this game. Yeah. Now, a lot of folks Different don't like kind of people, though. but it's got to be some more disruptor somewhere. Bone, where they at, man? My God. I'm here. Yeah. I, I, I'm here. Yeah. I mean, to your point, I tell you, man, when it comes down to people nowadays, people mm-hmm. are, are scared, right? They, they, got, they got fear. They scared they're going to lose their job. They're yep. scared they're going to do this. Nobody, because first of all, man, once again, it goes back to the social place. Yeah, People can get on social and say something about you, and people believe it, even yep. though it could be a bold-faced lie. Yeah. They're going to believe it, right? Because they just want to believe it. People mm-hmm. like corrosion. Come we on. are attracted to negative, right? Positive, not so much. But negative, we are very attracted to that. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that is. But I'm a, I'm a you know, I'm, I'm a perpetuator of that too, yeah. right? I fight it, and I try my best to be, not try my best, I am a better person. Yeah. But I'm no different than any other human. Yeah. You know, you watch stuff, be like, hey, man, what are they talking about over there, right? But there's a way mm-hmm. where you could jam people into groove, yeah. into greatness, you can make them feel good. We And how do we do it? Uh, our people learn through the rhythm of sound and music and, and, and sonic waves. That's right. Right? That's the reason why we have people, uh, that's why these kids are doing what they're doing, mm-hmm. right? Because they're learning corrosion through their music. Mm-hmm. They're learning destruction through their music. Why? 
because it's jamming to them. Yeah. And they don't realize because it's jamming to them that they are programming themselves for death and damnation. Whereas if you could jam people into happiness, that's what it's about. But it's hard. You gotta, that's why my album's coming. Yeah. Because it's hard to jam people into happiness. Because they don't, our people are going through a lot of traumatic stress from the yeah. time we came off the boat. So <laughs> Come on. It, it's a space of that. Understanding where we came from is the reason why we're here. Yeah. Right? Coming off the boat, we have been killed, murdered, mutilated, destroyed, all the things above and below. Right? Uh -huh. So anytime we try to assimilate ourselves into this particular system, we get ourselves in a place where we get killed, policed, destroyed. So now our people have what they call post-traumatic stress disorder. Damn right. Or something I heard recently, post-traumatic slave disorder. Oh. Right? That ain't mine. Some I, I I learned that from somebody yeah. else. I do a lot. Of, I do a lot of research for it. I would you right, 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 right. So that's that's something that um that's happening to our people every day. Mm -hmm. We get ourselves in a space where we don't understand because every time we try to do something right, mm -hmm. we get killed, we get destroyed, we get yeah. murdered, we get. And so we try to come together as a community, we get killed, we get murdered. So we, at that point, you just say, "Fuck it," <laughs> <laughs> and that's why our people are right now. Fuck it. Yeah, exactly. Right. But it exactly. has to be a space of where now, because we understand it, and we're getting frustrated. You're getting frustrated. Yeah. You weren't just frustrated 11 years yeah, ago when I, I was wasn't. talking to you. I wasn't. You're getting frustrated now. Yeah. You're like, man, I'm getting tired of seeing these guys I'm interviewing coming up here. The next thing I know, they're in jail get, or dead. Come on, man. Right? And they're too young. Exactly. And I'm tired of seeing it. I've been tired of seeing it. Yeah. I've been tired of seeing it since I've seen it because I knew yeah. it was coming. Ooh. Right? So I'm like, oh, man, this might have to be crazy, man. Yeah. yeah. Man, come on now. It's It's... The problem is, man, there are answers to these questions. Yeah. Very simple. The answers are usually very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. I won't give you the answers now. Yeah. I'll give them in my album Ooh. so you can hear them. <laughs> right? So the answers are clear. Yeah, yeah. Very simple. Yeah. If I'm fat, I stop eating so many calories <laughs> so I lose on. weight. Thanks. I've lost over 100 pounds my God. because I stopped eating all that damn day. So if I stop eating all goddamn day, and I start working out, and I start drinking a lot of water, I lose a lot of weight. Yeah, right? Yeah. So that's the key. Yeah. But it's that's that sounds very simple. Yeah. But how hard is it? Very. We live in America, man. It's fast food on every corner. And that food tastes good. Hey, man, it's on every corner. <laughs> so it's hard. It's hard. So what what most people do? Hey, doc, man, let me get let me get one of them little shots from you, man. Let me, let me, let me get the diabetes medicine. Yeah. Let me get this. Let me get that. Yeah. Because we as humans want to do everything but the right thing. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm the same guy. I did the same thing for many years. How do you see the world, though, now, Bone, at your age versus when you first got into the game? What are some oh. of the things that you said after a certain age, some shit you just couldn't take with you no further? Uh, I learned that you can't save everybody. Yeah. It ain't your job. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Ooh. But... For those that understand the mission, bring them on board. Yeah. You can't do it by yourself. But you can't do it with people that is creating uh, mutiny amongst the rankings either. Yeah. So you got to make sure that you are in a space of going forward, going forward at all times. Yeah. Because backwards is a terrible space. So that's what I learned, that if I can – move forward at all times, even if it's slow. Yeah. I'm moving, right? Mm -hmm. It was a slow grind, man. In the gym every day, man. Going to the damn restroom every five minutes. Swimming. Uh, swimming, running, doing sit-ups. Yeah. Man, I can do 500 sit-ups straight. Damn. Yeah, right now. So, Crazy. you know, it's just a space of, uh, it's a space of total understanding that Hard roads are very simple, mm -hmm. but they're very difficult to get to if you don't have your mind right. And that's what's wrong with us. Yeah. And me too at that time. Right? And mm -hmm. it's still effing with me. Mm. It's hard roads, man, to stop saying the word nigga. Yeah. You've oh. been saying that shit ever since you was a Come kid. Come on now. Since we were born, since we got off the boat, they've been calling us <laughs> niggas since we've been around. So it's going to be hard Come on. for us to stop saying the word nigga. 
Right? It's gonna be yes. hard. Yeah. So it, it, it's 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 a slow process, right? But we got to start somewhere. Yeah. And the answers are clear. Mm -hmm. But it's very difficult. But we can make it if we want the answer. That's right. A lot of people don't want the answer because we're so used to living in the problems. Yeah. I get more. I get more people telling me what their problems is. They suddenly get happy every time they talk about their problems. Yeah. Man, man, the man, man, the this, man, man, man. I say, hey, man, you know, you know, you can stop if you did this. Man, that ain't gonna happen, man. I, 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 ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna. Man, that ain't gonna happen. Man. I ain't gonna do that, man. I ain't gonna do that, man. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna just do that. I'm, 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 I'm gonna do that, man. <laughs> hey, man, you know, if you stop drinking all that alcohol, your liver will stop hurting. <laughs> oh no, no, I gotta have my drink now. Is that yeah, well, you gonna die? Yeah. yeah, if you stop eating fried chicken, man, your cholesterol will go down. Man, hell no, nigga. I gotta have that yard bird, dog. I gotta have that. You tripping. Oh, okay, well, I, mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to do. You know, I, that's why I gotta tell you, I take these shots. Yeah. <laughs> there you have it. Oh, man. Lastly, Bone, when is this album dropping, man? Uh, hopefully the single will be out here by the end of the year. Okay. I've okay. been holding on to it for about, oh man, I've been holding this album for about, you heard some of it. Yeah. I've been holding on to it for about, man, about 15 years now. Damn. Yeah. Just, just, that's just my Virgo pettiness. Yeah. And pessimism of my own stuff. Just trying to keep, get it right. Yeah. Right campaign. The campaign that people will see will be something that they've never seen. So basically seen you was pulling the Andre 3000 on us. Yeah. I get Andre. <laughs> That's my brother. I get him. He, he, he understands it. Yeah. He understands okay. it. Okay. Yeah, but the album is going to be, it's it's the return of the lyrical giant. Yeah. Um, DJ Toomp produced on it. That's hard. Drummer Boy. Yeah. Jazzy Faye. Woo. 80 Empire, yeah, um, and and Travis Cherry and uh, and a couple of new guys, Krispy okay. Kreme, Question, yeah. Um, I was very fortunate to work in Israel, Israel Beats. I was very fortunate to work with those talented brothers. Um, we had a good time making it, yeah. yeah. Um, and they are on my back about putting it out. I just had a conversation with Jazz the other day talking <laughs> about somebody else's album. Yeah. He said, "Man, you heard that album?" I said, "Yeah, it's cool." He said. Man, jam it, ain't it? I said, yeah, jam it, dog. It's good, it's good. He said, um, what do you think? I said, man, it's cool, man. He said, man. I said, man. I said, he said, man, you need to put that album out. I was like, oh, I'm going to put it out, man. He said, man, you tripping. Yeah. So, you know. But, yeah, the album's coming out. It's cool, man. It's a great record. First single will probably be, I can't say name of it because I don't want to give out nothing, but the first yeah. single is going to be crazy. Okay. Drummer Boy produced it. That's hard. I yeah. already know what that's about to do. Yeah. Now, with the documentary as well, when do we need to be expecting that? October. It'll be out October on Peachtree TV and Swirl Films. Okay. Yeah. You know? Okay. That'll be crazy. Uh, it's going to be very inspirational for the city of Atlanta. I hope mm -hmm. it helps a lot of people yeah. because so they can understand where they come from and they can know that the the founders of Atlanta Sound really care about the kids. Yeah. They really care about the community. They really care about what the sound of Atlanta is and um people are gonna be telling some good stories, gonna be a lot of pain, a lot of a lot of happiness and joy. And yeah. A lot of uh greatness coming out of people. I can dig it. How can they contact you, Bone? Uh all that social media stuff. The mm -hmm. real bone crusher on Instagram and that's it. Y'all heard the man get down with the movement. As always, appreciate you, Bone. Wish you hey, the best and much success. Thank you, brother. Be high ready, yo. Shout it, Bone Crusher. Holla at y'all in a minute, man. We gone.